Hello everyone, my name is Romain Niv. I'm here to present John Lott, done in collaboration with uh, my colleagues Jacob Safati, Sam Shatskin, Alan Shen, and my advisor Pedro Lopez at the University of Chicago. Let me sh first show you what happens when I jump with this contraption behind my back. If it works. <laughs> <laughs> Here, it felt like I actually jumped higher, but if you don't believe me, come check out our demo right after this talk. Um, but hold on, there were no um, cables or external structures helping me jump higher. I also didn't seem to have physically jumped higher either. So how does our backpack with no means of pushing me higher actually give me the illusion of jumping higher? So here, to help, to help us better understand what happened, we have Alan here wearing the same backpack. And as he jumped, <coughs> The backpack moves a two kilogram weight upwards. It produces just enough force to feel a vertical momentum, but not enough to make him physically jump high. And as such, we encourage you to think about this as a perceptual effect more akin to an illusion. By moving the weight up or down at different phases, we can actually achieve a total of five different sensations. For example, the sense of jumping higher, uh, but also the sense of being pulled up or down uh, by, external, by an external force, such as someone tugging you with a rope or even feel um, the sense of landing on a hard or soft impact uh, on the ground. So we integrated all these effects into a VR game because these effects were completely untethered and ungrounded, they work very well and freely moving. <laughs> <laughs> so here, Alan didn't jump high enough and knock the cow over. Uh, so he collected his cow <laughs> and then jumps with a jump piece this time over this next cow. And he succeeds. Now he's about to jump over some haystack, but the wind will blow him down in mid-jump, creating the sense of being pulled lower. Up ahead, there's a puddle of mud, um, and by jumping into it, he will feel like uh, a sense of jumping and a uh, landing softer. And finally, there's a pumpkin ahead. Alan will jump on it and crush it, creating the sensation of landing harder. All right, so why did we build this backpack? Well, gesture, gesture input, even full body, as you saw with Alan jumping in VR, has become, has become very popular in the last decade. And as such, researchers have been actively closing the loop um, by adding output sensations to match uh, input commands. Uh, for example, uh, handheld controllers can emulate the feeling of shaking virtual ice cubes in the cup. So hand input skeleton allows us to feel the shape of the ice cube uh, and manipulate with our hands. And similarly, um, Electrical muscle stimulation allows us to actually feel the weight in addition to its shape. Um, and others have even created shoes that allows you to step on these virtual objects. But what about jumping? Well, it turns out that vertical force feedback is extremely rare in mainstream interactive systems. Because a device is capable of making you jump, you need much more power, mass, and battery than all the ones that you see on the screen right now. So let's see how researchers add realism uh, to vertical experiences. <coughs> Researchers have used grounded devices, such as motorized pulleys, to suspend the user in there. Some also use motion chairs. <laughs> um, they need to have an entire infrastructure dedicated to the device, making it not very portable. Another popular approach is to use powerful propellers uh, to push air away from the user, generating forces. <laughs> While some devices using this approach are hands-free, other requires the need to hold onto it, which greatly limits the user's movement. Additionally, most are, uh, most are not powerful enough to lift the users off the ground. But the ones that do uh, actually require quite a powerful hardware, and it comes at a cost of weight. For instance, augmented jumps weighs 60 kilograms by itself and can only produce a 25% sense of reduced gravity. Plus, it creates quite a bit of noise, which can easily break the immersion. So it's not surprising that researchers have been searching in a smaller way uh, to achieve these effects. For instance, by altering the way the user sees in VR, they can create a sense of jumping higher. Um, while these work super well and um, are very effective, uh, they only work in VR uh, and not to all vertical experiences. Moreover, we know that real haptics tend to outperform super haptics, so we decided to explore this in a new way. Our approach is to find a force-based uh, illusion that requires a much smaller actuator, yet still affects someone's sense of jumping. And this is exactly what jump mod does. So we, we implemented our backpack with a motor, driving a belt, moving a two kilogram, also acting as our battery, uh, along this linear. 
Um, a belt tensioner ensures a very hard transmission between the motor and the weight, and the weight is actually being tracked with an encoder and limit switches located at both ends of the ground. Um, and finally, everything is controlled via a microcontroller equipped with Bluetooth and a um, motor control. In addition to the two traditional shoulder straps of a normal backpack, we have a sternal strap and two leg straps. To better understand our backpack, we conducted a perceptual study uh, in extreme conditions, so the participants could not hear nor feel the vibrations of the motor running. Participants were asked to jump and describe what sensation they felt. We studied our backpack by actuating at different phases of a jump in different directions. And this is what we found. Even in the most extreme conditions, participants were able to distinguish five different effects. Note that some effects can be replicated with different jumps to the Now, do we really need jump mod? Well, let us compare it to uh, the popular visual illusions used in VR. The goal of this study was to understand if realism induced by jump mod outperforms only using visual illusions. So we designed a VR experience to evaluate exactly this. And this is the same one that you saw at the beginning of the talk. Uh, we found out that immersion is superior with jump mod compared to the baseline, as well as realism. And this is quite exciting, as it suggested that jump mod does add value to the experience, and most participants preferred using jump mod, uh, the jump mod condition, even despite the added weight and sound. So far, I have shown you jump mod working in a VR game, in which you jump in books. Let me show you a more advanced experience, uh, some even go beyond VR. Uh, jump mod can be used for feedback guidance, for example. Um, uh, for example, learning how to jump rope. This is different from the previous experience as it does not render forces for the sake of realism, but rather the backpack informs the users when to jump. It can be used for other VR experiences, emphasizing exploring large spaces, for example, playing in a VR escape room game. Here, Alan is trying to reach for a key stuck on the chandelier right above him, which is out of reach. So he uses this trampoline on the floor to help him jump higher. So he finds a key and now is now able to escape. Since jump mod is completely ungrounded, it can be used for uh, playing a game of augmented basketball. Here, Shanyuan is trying to defend against Alan and sends a random haptic effect with this little device uh, on his arm. <laughs> so, <it's a> <laughs> <laughs> so Alan here got the jump boost effect and he managed to score. So to conclude, Looking back at previous work, these ungrounded devices allow rendering similar type of sensations such as, uh, as jump mod. However, jump mod achieves this by using a perceptual region, and hence is able to miniaturize hardware. As such, in this graph, haptic expressivity versus device size, we can put jump mod right around here. If we continue to populate this graph, we have at the very bottom the handheld controllers using linear resonant actuators. While its vibrations are very high resolution, it does not provide enough force to move an entire limb. On the other side, we have grounded devices using powerful motors to motor lift the user. We can actually see some kind of exponential curve covering the trend of these devices. But here, jump mod, we decrease the device form factor while keeping the same level of haptic expressivity in the, pre oh, sorry. In the previous project, we shrunk the overall form factor of a hand exoskeleton by using electrical muscle stimulation as the main actuator and a brake based exo. The extreme is much smaller and compared to traditional exoskeleton and only weighs 68 grams. My research is to argue that there's a way to make these devices using perceptual as well as engineering tricks to get a more linear churn. This would allow us to enjoy the same level of haptic expressivity but in much smaller form factor. My mission is to keep populating this plot, this plot by designing body scale haptic devices while keeping the form factor at body scale. Body scale haptics is important because it will first enable feedback uh, in highly mobile VR and VR experiences uh, that can be enjoyed at, at home, for instance, but also enable completely new interactive domains that we've never explored before. We would be able to carry physical assistance devices all day, like this finger spelling device that I showed in US 2021, or even delivering haptic defects in augmented sports. Today, I showed Jump Mod, a haptic backpack that alters the user's perceived jump. Jump mod achieves this by moving a weight along the user's back, which causes an initial moment that modulates the user's per uh, perception of their own verti uh, vertical jumps, while completely being untethered and hands-free. So please join us at our demo later, right after this talk, to try one of these VR experiences. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions now.